Hi guys, we are covering isosceles and equilateral triangles today. Um, getting some definitions and getting our head around things before jumping into some algebra. So isosceles triangles are composed of, or if we reflect back to our first lesson, these are triangles that have two sides that are congruent. So if I were to label this diagram here, here's my isosceles triangle. These two sides are congruent. These are the ones that I classify as the legs, right? So the legs are my um, two congruent sides. Okay, the vertex angle is the angle between the legs. So this is the angle between the legs. So we, we have those two pieces. We know that the base, this is the, um, like visually it's, it's the, just based on how it's oriented, it will be at the bottom of the triangle if it's if it's drawn that way. But it won't al always be drawn that way. So we say that the base is the um, the non congruent side. Let's say that this is the non congruent side, right? And then the base angles are the angles. Um, that are included in the in the base itself. So the base will constitute the sides of these base angles. Right? So these are the angles, um, say connected to the base. So that's kind of what we need to know about isosceles triangles. Now we also have the some theorems about um, the uh, arrangements here. So my base angles theorem tells me that if two sides are congruent, and this is given in a, an isosceles triangle. But we know that if, if my two sides are congruent, which would be these two, okay, um, then the angles opposite, the angles opposite these sides are congruent. So if I, I know that the measures themselves of the sides are the same, then those angles across from them have to also be the same. The converse is just going to be essentially the, the reverse logic. So that's saying if two angles are congruent, so if two angles are congruent, let's scroll so I can write better here, um, then the sides across or the sides opposite them are congruent. Okay, so both theorems relate the measures of the sides to the angles, um, but it's just kind of uh, which piece of information is given to us and which piece are we concluding from the given. And we'll be using those two theorems a lot in our solving today. Equilateral triangles, um, kind of unlike isosceles, which have two sides that are the same, equilateral triangles have all sides being the same. That's where the name comes from. So all three of these sides have the same measure. So we'll say all three sides have the same measure or are congruent. And this special property of equilateral triangles and um, all of the angles are the same measure. So we say all three angles are congruent. So it's like all of the um, course or uh, all sides, all three sides match, all three angles match. So we're going to use this information to solve for some unknowns. Okay, so for my first diagram here, I have two angles. Um, so I can already see that this is a, a case where I have an isosceles triangle with two legs and a base. We know that our theorem up here, um, the base angle theorem, well, actually, specifically the converse, if, my, if two angles are congruent, the sides opposite them need to be congruent. So that's saying the two sides opposite have to be the same. So if this is 22, this is also 22. So right there, I can conclude that x equals 22. So that didn't require any solving, it was just kind of understanding the diagram. Looking at number two here, I see that I have two sides 
um, with this, this triple tick mark. So it's saying that these two sides are congruent. And we know that if two sides are congruent, the angles opposite them have to be the same. So that's telling me that 72 equals 4x. And if I just solve by dividing both sides by 4, I end up getting 18. So x is equal to 18. So we know that about our variable here. Okay, so these are both illustrations of isosceles triangles. Um, my next diagram, we know we have an equilateral triangle because all three of these angles are the same. So if all three angles are the same, then the sides opposite have to be the same. So this y has to be the same as x, has to be the same as 12. So they all have to be the same, they have to be the same because um, the angles have to correspond to congruent sides and it's just an equilateral triangle. So x would equal 12, y would equal 12. So some a few examples there. All right, let's check out some that require a little more solving. Here we should um, notice that, okay, I have three tick marks. So all three of these um, sides are congruent, meaning the measures across for them have to be the same. Um, now, it is going to be kind of hard to um, relate things here, right? But if I see that, um, okay, this measurement has to be the same as this measurement, has to be the same as this measurement. Well, let's go ahead and start by relating two of them, or I could do that, or I could just know even more simply that these all have to be 60 degrees, right? And so that's going to allow me to solve for x and w. So I can say 6x plus 6 equals 60, and I can say 5w equals 60. Notice I don't even have to worry about the, um, the expression at the top because x has to be well, no, actually that, that will, yeah, let, let's take it bit by bit here. So if I solve by subtracting 6, get 6x equals 54. Divide both sides by 6 to get x equals 9. Okay. Except that's, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just, I'm realizing there was an issue with how this problem is constructed now that I'm solving it a second time. We're gonna, just get, we're gonna keep going with the theme. Um, here, if I divide both sides by five, I find that W equals 12. And really how this was written, this should be a different variable, guys. That's why I was pausing. This should be like a Y or something. So let's just go ahead and change it now. So seven Y squared plus 11 equals 60 also. And so if I solve by subtracting 11 from both sides, get 7y squared equals 49. Divide both sides by 7, we get y squared equals 7. Square root both sides, we get y equals positive or negative square root of 7. And so I have all three variables defined here. Okay, next scenario, we have case of isosceles because I have um, two measures here that are congruent. These are my legs. This would be my base. Um, now, these two variables are different, so it's hard to relate these two, um, knowing that they have to be the same. But if we think about the idea that we have a 180-degree budget, and I've already spent 50, that leaves 130. There's 130 remaining, and if I split that up, that gives me 65 for each of these angles. So I could just write two equations and say, well, 3x equals 65. Also, y plus 7 equals 65. Over here, if I divide both sides by 3, then I would get x equals about 21.7. And then over here, if I subtract 7 from both sides, we get y equals 58. And there we have it. Next one, it's getting a little more advanced. We have quite a bit more going on here. Um, so we really have two triangles built into one diagram. So if I go ahead and emphasize that here's a triangle and we have double tick marks. So all three of those sides are the same. So this automatically has to be an equilateral triangle, meaning all three angles are 60. So that makes X 60. Okay, and then I have a second triangle um, just next to it. And this would be an isosceles triangle. Um, now, I can take advantage of the fact that here's a straight angle. And so if 
I take out 60 from 180, this would be 120, right? And then if I've used up 120, I have 60 remaining to make 180, right? So if I split it into two ways, that gives me a 30 and a 30. So we see that y equals 30. And there we go. Okay, next one, we have a case where this is definitely an isosceles again. So these two sides are congruent, meaning the angles across from them are congruent. Um, now the trick here is that we don't have any information about this angle. We don't have any measures at all, actually. So we're going to have to build an equation, knowing that all of these angles have to add up to 180. And it's composed of a y squared minus 62. And there are, will be two of the 2y minus 5s. So if I go ahead and start solving, let's distribute over on the, the right here, y squared minus 62 plus 4y minus 10. I'm going to combine everything on one side, so y squared plus 4y, um, negative 62 with negative 10 with negative 180 is going to be negative 252. And um, if we kind of play around with our numbers, we see that this would factor as y plus 18 and y minus 14. And then solving, we get y equals negative 18, or y equals 14. This guy would be extraneous, because if I put negative 18 back into um, this expression, I get a negative angle. So I would keep it as just y equals 14. Well, we're at the end of the line there. Okay, so last diagram, and this one's pretty complex to unpack everything that's going on here. Um, but let's start with this angle all the way on the side. And we see that we have... <clears throat> Um, the single tick marks here, so the angles that they are across from have to be the same. So we know that E and T have to be the same. Okay. Um, we've already used up 62 degrees from our 180 degree budget. So if I do 180 minus 62, that's 118. 118 split two ways is 59 and 59. Right. So E and T, we have 59. And 59. Okay. Um, then that leads us into rolling over into our second triangle in the middle here. Similar concept. So if we see that, well, I have a, the double ticks matching the double ticks. So the angles that are across from these have to be the same. So that means that R has to be 75. 75 degrees. And then we have our final triangle over here, this guy which we have triple tick marks across from V and M. But notice we don't have any, um, any information pertaining to angles here, other than the fact that we see a straight angle here, right? We know that R is 75, E is 59, and so if I do 180 minus 75 plus the 59, I get a 46 degrees right here for M. And I know that that has to correspond to V. So V and M are both, uh, V and M are not in my list. But I need that to find U because U has to be 180 minus the combination. So 46 times two is 92. 180 minus 92 is 88. So U is 88. Okay, and then we missed a few, didn't we? V, oh, V, v was 46, we already found that. And then Q, I guess jumping back to that one here, Notice that um, Q is this guy up here. And so this would have been 180 minus 75 and 75 together, which would have given me 30. And you can always go back in and check your angles by um, summing them, making sure that each 